everybody! Time for leg warmers! I thought rather than doing the usual block stripe type, we'd try something a little different. Vertical striped leg warmers. These are awesome. I mean, obviously, they keep your legs warm. But they're also a really cool fashion statement, too. You can make these in two stripe colors, or you can make them in a rainbow of colors. It's totally up to you. So let's head to the table and warm up our legs. I'm going to change things up today and I'm going to use a bigger hook than I normally do. This is a 5.5 millimeter hook or um, an I9 um, depending on what sizing you use but this is a 5.5 millimeter hook. It's a bit larger and it's because I want my stitches just to be a bit bigger because this is a quick make project. I have my scissors, a yarn needle, I'm gonna, I've got a measuring tape today just because I want to measure how long it is from my knee to my ankle to decide how long I'm going to make my leg warmers. And I'm using acrylic yarn, worsted weight in size four. So like a Red Heart Chunky or um, a Bernay worsted weight, something size four, something nice and cozy and warm, because that's exactly what your leg warmers need to be. And I have chosen black and white as my two colors. So first thing I'm going to do is I've already gone ahead and I've measured from my knee to my ankle and I'm going to, that's 15 inches for me and I'm going to make it actually 15 inches long um, because I don't typically wear my leg warmers all the way up to my knee but I want them to scrunch a little bit because I like that sort of scrunchy look so I'm going to make it the full 15 inches and the way we go about making sure we have the right length is to use the ruler. Now this is a, like I say, it's a tape measure, it's kind of flexible, but um, you know, if you're stuck for things to use, you can also just use a length of string and decide how long you want your leg warmers to be by using a length of string, snip it at the right length, and then use that as your measuring guide. I'm going to start with the black, and because these are vertical stripes, we are going to crochet the entire length by chaining the whole length of how tall the leg warmers are going to be. So I'm going to start chaining until I have 15 inches worth of chains. Okay, I have chained a length which winds up being 52 chains long and that is 15 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and add two more because I'm going to do this in half double crochet. I'm going to half double crochet in the third chain from the hook. So you count backwards, one, two, three. That's the chain you work into. Half double crochet, as we know, is to wrap your yarn, pass your hook through that stitch that you want to work in, wrap your yarn, pull up a loop, so you have one, two, three loops on your hook, wrap your yarn, and pull through all three and that's a half double crochet. Now we're going to ignore the chain two on the end of every row so um, from here on out you're just going to um, do all of your work into the very first stitch kinda like you were single crocheting but I'll explain that when we get there. You're going to half double crochet back across your entire chained row nothing fancy here just straight half double crochet and once you get to the end of your row, so I'm at the end, I've done the last one, just compare it against your, um, and remember like it's going to stretch a little, so just compare it against your, your measuring thing, and it should still be about 15 inches or however long you want it to be. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you're done with your measuring tape. You want to make sure you count your stitches because now from here on out that's exactly how many stitches you should have um, and every single row. So go ahead and count. I have, you should have the same number of stitches that your basic chain was um, and because you're going to ignore your turning chain. So I have 52 stitches and that is the exact same number I'm going to have from here on out. So always 52 for me and uh, always your base chain number for you, whatever that might be. Now we're going to turn around and we're going to sort of half double crochet all the way back but here's that little thing I was telling you about. You're going to chain two because that's your turning chain. You're going to flip your work and you're going to half double crochet into the very first stitch. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll put my... It's basically the first real stitch at the bottom 
of your chain two. Now normally when you're doing um, half double crochet frequently if you're using the chain two as an actual stitch you would skip the stitch because that's going to be sort of where the chain two would sit. But we're ignoring the chain two. We're not using it as a real stitch. So that first stitch is where we're going to put our first half double crochet. So half double crochet and you're going to half double crochet in each stitch all the way back along your work and remember to count at the end of the row you should have the same number of stitches that you had at the beginning of your or should say at the end of your first row which is the same number of chains that you had in your base foundation chain row okay as you're nearing the end of your um, second row you're going to put a your last half double crochet in the top of the last real half double crochet stitch so you're going to ignore the chain two from the previous row um, kind of like it doesn't exist and then because you're done this uh, this is this two rows of black equals one stripe so we're going to snip our yarn and we're going to pull it back through just to sort of oops come here just to knot it off and then we're going to switch it up Gotta get my white going here, get the black out of the way, I don't want to get anything to get tangled. We're going to join it with a slip stitch. So you make a slip knot on your, your hook. And you're going to join in that first stitch with a slip stitch. And you're going to chain two. One, two. This doesn't count. So you're going to put your first half double crochet in the same stitch that you joined your white or your different colored yarn in. So you're going to half double crochet in that first same stitch and then you're going to half double crochet in each stitch all the way down the row. I'm going to work over my tails because I find that's sort of a neat way to weave them in as I go. But if that's kind of too much for your fingers right now, don't worry about it. You, that's why you've got a yarn needle. You can go back and weave in all of your ends afterwards. And you're just going to continue every single row from here on out is just going to be plain half double crochet. You're going to change colors every two rows. And of course, you could make these rainbow if you want to. And I just might do that now that I think about it. But I'm just going to use black and white uh, for today. So each stripe consists of two rows of half double crochet in each color. So you go all the way down and then you go all the way back up again. And I've got a knot here in my yarn. How do you like that? <laughs> so one stripe is two rows of half double crochet each color. And there, get rid of that. Haha. -ha. And at the end of every two rows of half double crochet, you can uh, snip your yarn and then change colors. And you're going to keep adding stripes until you feel it's wide enough to check around your leg. So this is another reason that I love making things that are totally customizable because you may want your leg warmers to go around your boots, you may want them to go around your bare legs, you may want them to be extra bulky and floppy, you may want them to be nice and tight like leggings. It's completely up to you and the number of rows you add is what allows you to get the kind of um, circumference that you want. So for example, if you were making them extra wide, you just want to keep adding stripes of two, two rows of half double crochet each until you've gotten the desired circumference. And I'm going to let you guys work at that for a while while I work at that myself. And in a few more rows, I will come back and I will demonstrate exactly what I want to do uh, as far as the width of mine are concerned. So I will see you guys in a few more rows. Okay, talk about epic striping. I have reached the end of the number of rows I'm going to put in in order to make my leg warmer as wide around as I want. And the way I did that was I stood comfortably and I took my measuring tape and I wrapped it around the widest part of my calf. And that for me worked out to about 14 inches. So I've made it about 14 inches wide 
And remember that because this is the part that goes around your leg, this is stretchy. So you don't have to make it um, too, too exacting to the, the measurement that you want, unless you want them really, really bulky, because this is going to stretch. So just remember that. So for me, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 rows. 16 rows gives me the width that I want. Now, in order to sew it together, you're not going to cut your string from your last row. So I left mine hanging. Now, if you did, don't worry about it. You can just reattach it with a slip stitch, but... Um, I didn't cut mine because I'm going to go right from my last half double crochet in my last stitch to slip stitching the whole thing together. So you can chain one, flip your work, bring your bottom row up to meet your top row. And I like to do this. So I take my hook and I put it through the very edge corner of my top row. Grab that chain one and pull it through. And now I can work on this side. Now you can single crochet this together if you like. You can even just whip stitch it together if you like. But I always find that it's quickest to slip stitch the whole thing together. And as you know, a slip stitch is just you put your hook through your work, wrap your yarn, and pull it back through everything. And you just Make sure you're going through the both the tops of both of the edge stitches. And you're going to nice and loosely slip stitch the whole thing together. And then you get this cool sort of chain effect running up the back of your leg. Okay, I have finished slip stitching all the way up my seam and that's working through both sides of the fabric. Now I'm going to snip my yarn and I'm going to fasten off. Now you can do one of two things here. You This can be your right side and you can have this sort of funky chain effect running up the one side of your stripe or you can turn it inside out and have absolutely no evidence of a seam anywhere. So it's entirely up to you but I'm going to turn mine inside out. And that way, you cannot tell that there's really been a seam. This is it actually right here, but it's really not that easy to tell. <laughs> See? Pretty cool. So, now you want to finish it off. Uh, this is entirely up to you. If you kind of like this sort of bouncy top edge, then that's great. You can find all of your little pieces and just sort of stuff them in behind or weave them in a little bit better. Um, even if you want to, you can sniff them, snip them. <laughs> um, so you can leave it like this, or you can go ahead and pick a color, join with a slip stitch or a single crochet, and simply single crochet in the end of every single row all the way around. So you can finish it that way too. I kind of like this sort of wobbly, unfinished edge because these are sort of supposed to be kind of funky. So I'm going to stick with just the unfinished top and bottom edges. Now, I am also going to decorate them. And because I'm sort of a fan of 80s toys like My Little Pony and Rainbow Bright and stuff like that, um, I'm going to go with some stars. Now, I have already created a star tutorial and I'll link that down below and you guys are more than welcome to go and check that out. I have other applique tutorials too like hearts and rainbows and whatnot, or if you're feeling adventurous, you can come up with your own. And what I'm going to do is just sort of decide how I want these running up the side of my leg warmer, keeping in mind that I might scrunch it a little bit. Um, so I'm going to keep them fairly close to the top, but I'm going to stagger them in a row. And I'm just going to lay them out like that. And once I think I've got a thing that I like, I will start by sewing them on, and that's where my trusty yarn needle comes in. And you'll see that I left nice long tails on all of my um, stars so that I won't have any difficulty sewing them down with their actual uh, string. But you don't have to do this. You can also sew them down with a regular sewing needle and thread. Just remember that because you're sewing onto a stretchy fabric, you want to use nice long stitches. So that's typically why I prefer to use a yarn and needle, uh, yarn needle, when I'm sewing down appliques that I have also crocheted. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these down. Now 
there we go. I've sewn on all three stars onto my vertical lines. And now we just make number two. And remember, because leg warmers are pretty much just tubes, they are mirror opposites of each other. So you don't have to do anything differently in the body of it. You just want to make sure that you put your stars on the opposite side. Um, and if you have done it this way where you can't really determine where the seam is, then it doesn't really matter where you put them. They can be absolutely identical. It's just all in how you put them on. And there you go. One nifty vertical striped pair of leg warmers with a little bit of an accent. I'll link all the other little applique tutorials that we've done in the comment box below. So if you are looking for ideas, check them out. You can also make these just plain stripes, obviously, but I always like a little bit of extra flash. Um, these are super cute worn over top of boots. They can be worn over top of your jeans and they're really, really, I don't know, they're really, really warm. I'm probably just going to wear mine around the house a whole lot, but I think I'm like, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a pair in complete rainbow stripes and I might just go ahead and put that rainbow and the cloud on it because I am just obsessing over rainbow dash right now. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. If you guys make a pair, I would love to see a copy of a picture of them. You can post it to me on Google Plus, just at sign and my username and I will be sure to see it. You don't have to make it public if you're shy. You can also just make it private but I would love to see your pictures because that makes me really really happy. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. Remember to share it with your friends and uh, tune in again soon when we stitch up something else. <laughs> Thanks so much guys. We'll see you soon. Bye! <laughs> oh. <laughs>